first I want to talk a little bit about something that Sunshine just reminded me of, which is the up, right, left, down philosophy. All right? Now, this is an idea that you need to practice. It's almost like a, a dance step that you have to fall into, because jiu-jitsu passing is a lot like a dance. There's rhythm to it, and you have to be able to use that rhythm to anticipate the timing, to see the, see the openings to pass someone's guard. So most passing is not done in a singular pass. So go ahead and go on your back for me. This is going to kind of take a while to explain. This is a long, drawn-out concept. You might have to go and watch this video later to fully catch all the details. And when I say long and drawn-out, that doesn't mean that it is not concise. It's just a lot of information. Um, and a lot of things go into this. So this is the up, down, left, right philosophy. All right? And that is because passes work on a three-dimensional plane. All right? This direction, here, vertically, moving up and down, and then forward and back. So there's three dimensions to this passing movement. A pass that uses this direction going straight forward would be something like a knee cut, where I go from here, and I move towards his head, and I move straight forward to pass his guard. That's just directly forward. A pass that it moves completely laterally here would be something like um, uh, X pass, where I move to the side and then come back in and engage. A pass that moves down would be something like a pressure pass, dropping into positions here where I'm putting my weight down using gravity to effectively pass his guard. And then a pass that moves up would be something like where I'm putting pressure, he defends, and in that defense it has an I have an opportunity to stand up and use that compression that I just wound up in his body to sort of unwind the compression and use it to pass the guard. So an example of that would be a throw by pass, or maybe I'm putting pressure here, and as he resists, I stand straight up and unload all of that potential energy and then drop back down. All right, so those are all directly passing from one direction or another. Now the up, uh, up down, left, right philosophy is using all those ideas together and tying passing together into one motion. And this is where you can get creative and why you see great passers have that sort of fluid motion in their passing. You have to be tying those directions together when you do passes, all right? You need to be putting downward pressure and then whenever you meet resistance along that downward pressure, you have an opportunity to go up, all right? Whenever, that, whenever there's a directional pass that you're doing, the opposite pass is the one that will have more success. So if I'm moving down and I'm re reaching an impasse, I stand up and I'll have another opportunity to pass. If I reach difficulty passing while I'm standing up, I can go back down or I can choose a direction left or right, okay? So you have to choose what is the first direction you want to start in a passing movement. Usually forward and down is the, a great place to start. But you can also start up. It really doesn't matter where you start, but whenever you start, you need to do the inverse of that direction to continue the passing string. Does that make sense? Let me just give you an example, and I'll walk through the directions that I'm doing it. So Mia, you're going to just put me in guards, kind of, and I'm just going to kind of break the positions as I go in. So I'm going to be trying to pass Miha's guard. I'm going to be up first here. He grabs something on me like this. I'm up. I'm not able to pass while I'm up. So I go down. I was up. I go down here. Once I'm down, I'm putting pressure, and I get to choose left or right. I'm going to choose right. So I went up, down. Actually, let's go left just to um, stick with the up, down, left, right. So I go up down, I move to the left. Here, I'm reaching difficulty passing. In this same motion of him defending my pass to the left, I have an opportunity to go to the right. Here, now, I'm right, and I reach another impasse. I don't want to go left again, but I could. I'm just going to go up again. When I'm up, now I have another opportunity to pass in a different direction, left. After I moved left, I go down. And at some point along this up, down, left, right movement, I actually pass his guard. Okay? So every time that you engage into a passing movement, there's an issue where people tunnel vision on one direction and they just keep moving there. So you'll see guys just be like,
All I'm doing here is just left and down. That's it, I'm spamming it. Left, down, left and down. It's like a video game where I'm just button mashing. Left, down, left, down. I know there's a combo here somewhere. If I just keep smashing left, down, I'll eventually pass. And a lot of times, you can. That's not to say it doesn't work. But if you're trying to be fluid in your passing, you need to go the opposite way. You gotta do the full combo. You gotta go left, right, up, down, forward, back. And I just call it the up, down, left, right philosophy because the up, down, left, right, forward, back philosophy doesn't roll off the tongue as well. So now that you know up, down, left, right, and you also know that forward and back is involved in there, right? So we have X, Y, and Z axis of our three-dimensional passing plane. You also can know the line, the, the actual X, Y, Z lines are on his body, all right? If you imagine where you're trying to get to. And, so let's say X axis is here, right? It's this way. Y axis is here. This, it all converges right here, like right between his knees. This is the center point. The knee and hip line here creates the Y axis. It's like this plane here, right? The Z axis is across his spine here like this. So we have the flat plane here, the vertical plane here, and then there's another one this way, all right? So what I need to do is there's, there's um, basically eight quadrants. We have this one, or not a quadrant, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure the correct terminology here, but there's basically a, a square here, a square here, a square here, a square here, and then squares above and squares above on this side. And to pass his guard, I need to get to the bottom left and right quadrant. So I have to put my body here, but I start up here, and I have to, Break his knee line. If I can break apart this, these planes here by moving his knees down, it becomes infinitely easier to pass, all right? If he keeps his knees in this knee line along the planes that I'm trying to pass, it's gonna be much more difficult. So everything I do has to be around where his knees are connected and how his hips are engaging in that movement. So when you do your passing, you don't have to do a proper pass you just have to attack the weak points. And one of the weakest points of a guard is just this pressure here. Like almost all passes work because something pushed his knees past this hip line. Once your knees just pass, even just a few degrees past the line, this is where his guard gets passed because if he tries to recover his legs and crunch his body, he cannot. I can hold his legs with just my hand force. So I'm always trying to just break his knees away from his chest. The simplified version without trying to visualize some sort of three-dimensional plane is to just keep his knees below his hips, below the belt line. I'm trying to keep the knees below. And that is done from almost every single pass that you can do. You're either artificially creating this knee break by moving my body past it with something like a long step where I've just moved past it and that's essentially doing the same thing because he's going to be trying to bring his knees up and I'm going to be blocking them with my arms or hands or head. And then you can do, accomplish the same thing through pressure as well. So if I knee cut here, his hips are turning. This leg is still in the line. I have to clear that. So I can either clear it by using my hand, my elbow, by putting a lot of pressure upward and clearing it with my hip, dropping the pressure like this here you can just brute force it and pull yourself past it. And now I'm past. And that's the situation we're in, okay? Any pass does this, Toriando. If I keep his knees by his chest as I do my Toriando, I'm not gonna be able to pass. This is reinforcing his guard. The Toriando only works if when I go in, I reach a point where I can push his legs away. And as he tries to pull them back into me, I can pin them and redirect that pressure of him trying to pull his legs back in blocking his ability to recover. So when I say that you don't need to know passing techniques, it's true. You don't. You could pass someone's guard using no real technique as long as you just push his knees down. So say, I, let's say, go ahead and go on your back again. Just a little thought experiment here. You know I like to experiment a lot in jiu-jitsu. Say I don't know anything about jiu-jitsu techniques, but I know that I need to keep his legs down and I'm facing someone who doesn't maybe have the best technique. If I, he just play, just play any sort of guard, doesn't really matter. 
If I just go down, bad technique, I don't actually use my grips properly, I went down. But then I just move left, and there's legs in my way, so I'm just trying to get around his legs, and I move left. Here, he's gonna recover, and then I'm just gonna go right. He's gonna recover again, and then I'm gonna go up. And as he tries to get pressure, I'm gonna go down. And then I go left, and then he recovers, and then I go right. Like, I'm not doing any real technique, but just by going up, down, left, right, and knowing, that was without even breaking the knee line. I actually can create all these weaknesses in his game of someone who actually knows how to move their hips. And that's powerful. That's very powerful. And can't be ignored. So if you're looking at jiu-jitsu like it's a series of techniques that you would like grab the technique and you use it, it's not how it works. There's an underlying methodology here that then once you have technique, you can, you can refine those movements. But you're still trying to follow this basic fundamental pattern. And that is being used from the lowest level to the highest level, if, even if they don't know it. There's plenty of black belts that don't know that that's happening, but that's what they're doing. And you can see them do it. Rodolfo Vieira was a master of this. If you ever watch Rodolfo Vieira's passing, he's constantly just going up, down, left, right, forward, left, up, down. Like you could map out his movements and like create a video game about it and literally just have left, right, up, down, coded to buttons. And you could ha like do that. It would actually, that would probably be the way to actually create a jiu-jitsu video game. Because it's something that's like a framework that can be built upon with adaptations to the basic idea, which is just moving your body from one area of the plane to another. One of the most common and beautiful passing sequences you can do that incorporates this is the long step passing sequence. Long step is one of the most beautiful passes you can do. It's very elegant. You can just move right past someone's guard. You engage, the second they go to defend, you just completely move your body out of the way of the guard and you pass, all right? So let's just do a little passing sequence here. I'm gonna engage with down first. Down, I'm just gonna drop my weight directly down on him in a knee cut position. Once I move down, I reach the impasse and now I'm gonna move left. I'm gonna grab his collar, I'm gonna grab his pants and I'm gonna do my long step left. He's gonna defend by bracing with his arm across my face and creating space as I long step. This was left. I have his leg, I'm gonna pull it towards me because now I have an opportunity to move right. I walk my body around to the right, here. He's now gonna turn towards me again to defend, probably throwing the leg over my face. So I did down, left, right. What's left? Well, what's left in the sequence is up. So I went down, left, right, now I go up. I'm up, the leg has crossed my body, so I have another opportunity to go left again. So I move left. Here, he would turn again, facing towards me, throw, your, throw this leg over the top again. This is a very common reaction. I went left, and I can drop into an over-under passing position and go right. And there is where the sequence would end. So the full motion is really just playing off the lack of option he has is from those positions. So the full sequence would be down, left, right, left. He throws the leg over, over the top knee high. I know, I know your guard suffers sometimes. <laughs> and that's another option is them turning away. So really the whole idea is playing off what they can do properly, okay? So like, for instance, Successful guard retention really comes down to very few moves. There's only a few things that it can do from each position. If he's putting pressure down and trying to pass my guard with downward pressure, I have to react by creating space, putting him back upwards and getting my legs in front. If he's trying to pass to left or right, I really only can turn into him or away from him. And if I turn away from him, I'm exposing my back and that's not really a guard recovery. So I have to turn in. And I can either bring my leg over his head or I can bring my leg under his head. Those are your two options. And if you're keeping good inward pressure, going under his head is not really an option. So most of the time people go over the head. And as he goes back to his left, again, I'm in the same position. Can I go under his head with this leg? Probably not, I have to go over his head. And so you fall into these rhythms where people have to react by only throwing their leg up and they really only have 
those four options. They can turn in, they can turn away, they can throw the leg over, or they can throw the leg under. So your up, left, up, down, left, right corresponds with their inward, outward, over the head, or under the head recovery. And you develop that understanding of what direction to go to counter that just through time and practice. And that's why passing drills are important, fluid passing drills, and also live sparring from positions. And sometimes you don't even have to know a technique. You just have to move in the proper direction and you'll see opportunities.